Hello. Hi, friends. <laughs> Hi, friends. Hello. It's Alexa and Mackie, and we're here today to do the ultimate Harry Potter tag. We weren't tagged to do this, but I saw this over on a Clockwork Reader, and I was like, we have to do it because Harry Potter. And it seemed like a good month to do it because Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them came out last week, and I hope you guys all went to see it or are planning to see it because it was really, really good. I don't know who originally created this tag, but I will link to that video when I find it. So the first, like, category is like a general sort of thing about the series. So the first thing is your favorite book. Easy question, because we've answered this multiple times. My favorite book in the series is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, because I feel like it's a very big turning point for Harry. And I also just really like the setup of the Triwizard Tournament with all the schools coming and all the different like competitions that they have to do. I just, I, I really love that book and I enjoy it every time I reread it even knowing what happens. And Mackie's favorite book is... Book seven. It's more important how you end than where you start. And Harry Potter brought so much closure, too much, too much closure, to the point where the closure was so great that it reopened everything and now everything's still too soon. So... <laughs> it feels like an open wound that it never really It's still healed. an open wound. Uh, like everybody else that's still grieving at the end of that book. Actually, to I forgot day. to say, that this is also going to be slightly spoilery because we are going to be talking about things in the book. So if you haven't read the series, feel free to ignore this video because you might find out things that you don't want to know yet. And we don't want you to find out things you don't want to know yet. It's better to go into that series blind. I don't even read the blurbs. But yes, is that all you want to say about book seven or did I just interrupt you? That's it. The rest will be followed by immense amounts of crying. Okay, the second question is least favorite book. I would go with... Wow, that's hard now because I reread everything again. I reread everything too. Prior to my rereading anything, I think four would be the one I did. <sighs> Personally <laughs> insulted. Because <laughs> Diana. Oh no, five. no, that's not true. Sorry. So prior to my rereading everything, I think five would have been the one that I did. Oh, like me too. Most. That is what, that used because, to be my least favorite. Because you know, at the time, I read it disjointed from everything Harry else. In that book. You know, we hated Harry at that book, but now after we read it, we're like, oh, this makes total sense that he's lost think, his okay. marbles and tossing like a fit. So it used to be five. I think I can safely say, like, I love the entire series. I do. I reread the entire thing. I enjoyed the entire thing. If I had to pick one, like under duress, if I had to pick one, Chamber of Secrets is actually my least favorite. No. Mostly because when I read it, I noticed, or at least I felt like I noticed, that compared to the others, I didn't particularly feel like the timing was done very well because it was like oddly paced like it would be really fast and then really slow and then really fast and then really slow and i just like it's a very like minor thing because i still love that story and i still think like what happens in it is very important to the rest of the series but like if i were gonna pick one that would probably be the one i'd choose okay at this point in time after reading it i would probably go with the fourth book not because i don't like it uh but because it's of the of everything else that's the one that i guess i would reread the least I wasn't a huge fan of the Triwizard Tournament, apparently. That's interesting. Because it was so slow paced and- That's very interesting. And there were like three, it's like, you know, oh, two months later, we're gonna go to the next thing. And I'm just like, what the, hell's that? what the hell else is everybody else doing? I mean, if I could go participate at a Triwizard Tournament because my school was participating, yeah, take me to another country and let me live there for like six months. But from a reader's perspective, I, Obviously one was amazing because that's your gateway drug, Harry and Ginny. My ship, the one I identified from day one, is book two, so obviously that's not going to be bottom of the pile. I love The Order of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, Azkaban is still my second favorite. Six was my when my Harry and Ginny ship flew. So I like how leaving... ship flies and doesn't sail. Well, in my world, <laughs> ships fly. Anyway. Ship. Anyway, so obviously it leaves. Four. So, so that leaves four as a as like fourth place even literally because you know d d d gradients and stuff and so there is no seventh place, it's really just fourth place. But really, it's a lie because we really just love the entire series. Agreed. Okay, number three favorite movie. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I. It's very hard. You know what? I'm gonna say Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, because I just found it very charming, and I think. It's just because there was less material that they needed to work with, they were able to incorporate <laughs> a lot of it into the movie so that it looked or it felt like it was very much like the book. As opposed to like the later movies where there's so much detail and there's so much going on that you can't, like it's impossible to incorporate all that into a movie. So you kind of are missing things that you wish were there. Like, I think that that's why I would pick Harry Potter and the Treasure Stone. But also because that movie was just really, really adorable to me because watching it now, I'm just like, Look at these precious children. 
Also, I just, it was like the movie that brought me and a lot of my friends together because we loved, loved it and were just crazy for it. Same. Okay, least favorite movie. The one directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Um, the third one, yes, that's the one I don't like as well. That's the one I like the least, that's the one I like I mean, it's not like I don't watch it. Or don't get me wrong, Alfonso Cuaron I mean, like, is one of my part is favorite great. Uh, uh, directors. But like, I love what he did with The Little Princess. strange. Like how he his like especially after you watch one and two and then you get that and you're like yeah I think it, yeah which is uh, ironic because that's technically their puberty you know phase and so that go figure that's the gangly one of all of the seven movies so yeah yeah they were also really gangly I mean it had its moments don't get me wrong so there's still that but yeah that would also be my least the next one is favorite quote oh come on really. What day of the week is it that I want to get my favorite quote? Um, okay, I'll, I'll give the most recent one that I'm hung up on because I, I, in my life, the book series that I love, I have quotes that just cycle through. Mm -hmm. um, and mine would be, um, happiness is so hard to find. Some, oh, I love so, that song. And, uh, uh, yeah. uh, happiness is so hard to find. All you have to do is turn on the light. And uh, and I know that it, that uh, J.K. Rowling draws from. Uh, her own experiences of you know just kind of going through difficult times and, and channeling all of the, the grieving and the sorrow and the depression into you know the books and the recovery so that's that that matters to me and I think that will be my favorite quote of all time from Harry Potter only because it resonates with my life. Is it terrible that the first two quotes that pop into my head are both like you're a wizard, Harry? No, no, no. they're like the most random quote. They're, they're not. They're not that meaningful or lovely. I will tell you the first two things that popped into my mind. The first thing is when Bellatrix and Mrs. Weasley are fighting and Mrs. Weasley just yells at her, Can not my daughter, you bitch. You didn't step away from my daughter, you bitch. No, not my daughter. Okay, bitch. fair. At least I'm pretty sure it's not. No, that was a good quote. That's a good quote. I, I just love that quote. I don't know, it makes me laugh. The second thing I remember is when George makes the joke about his ear and he says, holy. I'm holy. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I, these the are not, for... like, Okay, let's just say that I like I find that there's a lot of stuff from Harry Potter that I have kept as quotes and like written down and everything. But for some reason, th those two quotes are like the first thing, like favorite quote. Ding! Not, I was e like, not even no. after all this time. Always. No, not, not even. even that. Not even. Characters now. So favorite Weasley. <laughs> Why would you Ginny. make it so hard? I love the Weasley. Ginny Weasley. The only one I don't like is Percy. Well, not that's not that's a lie. I still kind of like Percy, but not really. Fine. I'm gonna say that upon my reread, I think Belle is my new favorite Weasley. Next is favorite female character. <laughs> I like how I had to stop and think. Ginny Weasley. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go with Hermione just because I feel like she's basically someone I could relate to and yeah, I mean, in if, all aspects of her life, really. If Harry Potter were aptly named, like in terms of titles, it's every book would be and Hermione Granger and the time that she made sure everybody did everything they should and saved the day. Favorite villain. I really love Bellatrix the Strange. Bellatrix was strange, I'm sorry. Just because I think her brand of insanity and devotion to the Dark Lord is very interesting to me. And I would really like for someone to explore the whole backstory about why she's so effing attached to the Dark Lord. Still don't have favorite villain must think. I'm out, I don't have any favorite villain. I mean, like, honestly, I just find her fascinating. I wouldn't say like she's a favorite character, like favorite, but like if you were gonna ask me about like which villain I thought was interesting, then definitely Bellatrix. No favorite villain. Favorite male character. Why must these questions be so hard? There's too many. Albus Dumbledore. You know what? I'm gonna actually say Harry. Which is weird because I would never have said Harry if you had asked me like the first time I read the series. But having reread it, I will say Harry. Why did you say Dumbledore? He's cool. <laughs> the reason I like Harry, he's somewhere in the middle and that's fine. Like he's normal. <laughs> And I think that's like the this time reading it, I really felt that and I was like, okay. Plus I forgot how sassy he is in his mind. Like when he thinks things or even when he says things to people, I'm just like, I don't remember you being this funny. Why are you so funny to me now? Maybe it's because I'm an adult and I've developed a sense of sarcasm. As opposed I mean, to the other times that you read them in the last three years that you were an adult. I don't know. Favorite professor, <laughs> McGonagall, all the way. I have loved Professor McGonagall since she first shows up in book one. And Maggie Smith's portrayal of Professor McGonagall is amazing. Apple stubble door. Would you rather? Oh, this should be fun. Okay, would you rather A. Wash Snape's hair or B. Spend a day listening to Lockhart rant about himself? 
<laughs> would I get bonus points for doing either of these things? Because if I got house points, I would be willing to do either. I will do anything to wash Alan Rickman's hair. Actually, I was gonna say the same thing because that would be doing a service to the rest of the school. Of course, we're under yeah. the assumption that all of these things are voluntary, wherein Lockhart will voluntarily go with you into a room and talk, and Snape will voluntarily let you wash his hair. Exactly. Because if this was against both their wills, I'm taking Lock. I ain't touching Severus Snape's hair. Next is, would you rather duel A, an elated Bellatrix, Bellatrix, or B, an angry Molly? Uh, obviously, I would just duel Bellatrix because I have a better chance of surviving. Angry Molly. I can calm mothers down. Oh yeah, he's good with moms. Would you rather travel to Hogwarts via A, the Hogwarts Express, or B, flying car? Hogwarts Express. Flying car. <laughs> Would you rather A, kiss Voldemort, or B, give Umbridge a bubble bath? Bubble bath, because I, I then it's a bath. hop, skip, and a throwaway to haul her down. Would you rather A, ride a hippogriff, or B, ride a fireball? I think I'd go uh, with hippogriff. Fireball. Okay, book to movie adaptation. Is there a character which you felt differently about in the movies versus the book? This is a very difficult question. Dude. To me, they're just very different things, so it's very hard. I don't necessarily think I felt too differently. I feel differently about movie Ron Weasley because I think they capitalized too much on him being the comic relief for the for the films, especially the early films. Why is Rupert Grint an idiot most of this time when in fact Ronald Weasley is kind of a chess wizarding chess genius, slightly bigoted, but then he changes as well, and we don't even see that growth. In the books, he starts out as flawed and kind of almost bigoted towards house elves, just kind of like, you know, light racism, right? Um, and then he changes that. He, he recoils at Lupin the minute he finds out he's a werewolf, but towards the end, he lets Lupin bandage his leg. So, book Ron had more depth, while movie Ron was kind of typecasted as I'm the funny Goofy sidekick. Friend. Is there a movie you preferred inside of the book? No. No. Um, I will always prefer the books. I enjoy the movies. Nothing beats the books. Nothing beats the books for me either. Richard Harris or Michael Gambon as Dumbledore. Oh, but I love them both so much. But my thing is, they're at, they're like Dumbledore at different parts of his life and in relation to Harry. Although no, I'm, I'm who who played the most recent one? Michael Gambon, I think. Richard Harris is the one who passed away. I'll I'll take I'll take the Michael one because he's a little closer to the cheekiness of Dumbledore. Um, if you smush them together, they'd be perfect. I was gonna say that because like Dumbledore is not just cheeky, he also has kind of like fatherly thing and that Richard Harris has that a little bit more than Michael Gambon. Yeah. Okay, your top thing, person or event, which wasn't included in the movie that annoyed you the most. Peeves. Hermione's buck teeth and bad hair. Okay, so if you could remake any of the Potter movies, which would it be? Can I say all? All! And like have them be like Game full? of Thrones! feature length series instead of movies. Every single because, like, year is gonna be a season. Cause I feel like that way you could have all the fun little side stories. 13 episodes, 45 to 50 minutes long. Yeah, you could have all the little side stories and the details that they kind of had to cut out. And then you could also go into depth with some of the other characters, which you don't really get a chance to do. And I think that would be more fun to watch. So yeah, I would probably make really them all. So Hogwarts, which house was your first gut feeling you'd be a part of? I felt like I would be a Hufflepuff. I thought I'd be in Gryffindor. Which house were you actually sorted into on Pottermore? First time I was sorted, I was sorted into Hufflepuff. The second time when they redid the whole like sorting quiz, whatever, I got sorted into Ravenclaw, which is not too surprising because that, that is the house I would have said was my second. So yeah. First house was Hufflepuff, next house was Gryffindor. Don't understand why. And which class would be your favorite? If it were real me, like the actual me, divination, because I could ace the crap out of that. I think I would be really good at Transfiguration, because really, I always thought you were more of a charms person. Nah, I would. I mean, I'd be good you're at charms. charming. Oh, <laughs> I'd be good at charms That's too. That's also half a come on. I'd be, I'd be good at charms too. But like, I feel like I would be, I would enjoy transfiguration most because it would be so challenging. Which spell do you think would be the most useful to learn, Accio? Because <laughs> I will uh, just literally summon everything to me. Ah, uh, yeah, I would go with that. This is a like lazy, honestly, like I could summon household. everything I wanted. Akio hot, Akio, Akio, Akio hot chocolate. Oh, even better, if I lost something, all I would have to do is be like Akio, and I could, it would just find its way to me. Oh god, I need that. That yeah. would be amazing. Which character do you think at Hogwarts you would instantly become best friends with? Scorpius Malfoy. Probably Neville. I think I would actually be really good friends. I would have nothing to say to Neville on bottom. Him, and he would have nothing to say to me. Miscellaneous, if you could own one of the three hollows, which would it be? Invisibility cloak. Cloak. Is there any aspect of the books you'd want to change? It could be anything, a character, but no. No, we're good. I'm, I like, I love it. As you guys have seen in like our previous universe hopping video, we, we love this world and we love these books. I don't, I can't think of 
any single thing that I would want to change. Favorite Marauder? Remus. Remus. I love him. Remus like, I feel like if I were gonna like meet all of them, he's the one I would gravitate to immediately. Only because he's the only decent human being James there. would like intimidate the hell out of me. James is a- Sirius would scare me. James and I just... Potter is an arrogant toe rag. <laughs> Lily Potter. <laughs> well, Lily James at the time. Yeah. If you could bring one character back to life, who would it be? One. Fred. I refuse to pick one because I need four of them to be alive. Fred. But I think like if you made me pick one, I would probably pick Fred because I hate the idea of George not having Fred. It just breaks my heart. And the last question is, Hallows or Horcruxes? <laughs> Horcruxes. Oh. I don't know. I don't think I need either thing. I would be perfectly content to be a normal-ish witch. I would like the invisibility cloak, but I don't think I'd like the rest of it. I would perfect the Horcruxes. I would find a way to make it happen without killing people. And there you have it guys, that is the ultimate Harry Potter tag. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing our answers and we would love it if you answered some of the questions down in the comments below. We'll tag Kristen over to Super Space Chick who is our fellow Harry Potter fan. We will see you guys soon for another video. I will be uploading a book haul soon. Mackie will upload part two of his series review for Miss Peregrine soon. So you guys will be seeing that. And yeah, if you want to see Mackie do a version of my wrap up as well or do a wrap up with me then let us know too because he's been reading a lot lately and i'm sure he has a lot to share all right we'll see you guys soon 